Throughout the course, we've developed and used rate expressions that depend on the concentration and temperature in our reacting medium. So let's look at a situation where we have a catalytic reaction occurring in a packed bed reactor. So we have a cross section shown here and we have our active sites displayed as these pink dots supported in these porous catalyst particles. So for reaction to occur here, we have to transport reactants to our active sites and products away from our active sites. So we've generally assumed throughout the course that these rates of transport are fast with respect to the surface reaction, such that we can use the concentration and temperature of our bulk fluid to describe the conditions where the reaction is actually occurring. But what if we have concentrations and temperatures where the reaction is occurring that differ quite substantially from those in the bulk fluid? In this case, our rates and selectivities will differ from our predictions based on surface kinetics alone. This can happen if the maximum possible rates of mass transport become comparable in magnitude to the kinetic rate of reaction. So zooming into the surface of one of these particles, we have a bulk fluid that we take to be well mixed at a fixed and known concentration and temperature. And then we'll have a stagnant boundary layer where there's no agitation of the fluid near the surface of the particle. This will provide what we'll call external resistance to mass and heat transport. Then we also have diffusive transport of reactants and products through the internal porous structure where the active sites are located, and we'll call this internal resistance to mass transport. And we'll deal with these two situations separately in the coming videos. So if mass transport is not sufficiently rapid to provide reactants to the catalyst surface and transport products from the catalyst surface, concentration gradients will develop either in this stagnant boundary layer or within the catalyst particle. Similarly, temperature gradients can develop if heat transport is not sufficiently rapid. So we could have increased temperatures relative to the bulk fluid if the reaction is exothermic and is generating lots of heat, or we could have temperatures that are lower than those in the bulk fluid if the reaction is endothermic. So what we'd like to do is be able to quantitatively describe the concentrations and temperatures at our active sites such that we can predict and molecularly interpret the rates that we measure by describing the rates of heat and mass transport in these reacting systems. So in our first situations, we'll describe external transport resistance, so looking at concentration profiles in this boundary layer, and we'll assume for this case that there's no internal resistance to mass transport, so essentially we'll have a flat concentration profile within our catalyst particle. 